In this video we explain the minimum A prices tasks in technical detail and with slowdown. If you haven't already seen the premiere video, make sure to go watch it here. Okay, welcome to the commentary for the minimum A press tasks. We are going to be using slowdown and save states just to explain everything. Um, Kriller37 is here. He is an author of the task. He contributed a lot more of the inputs to me that, or than me and worked on a lot of the really hard parts that uh, are honestly over my head. So <laughs> thanks for joining <laughs> Kriller to help explain this. And yeah, yeah of course. This will be fun. There's some like general concepts I could talk about, but I think I'll just mention them like once they come up. Right, like gravity or Like something. for the first time. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> so the very first thing, uh, you know that you're going to want to get Fire Flower because shooting fireballs to kill enemies is going to save tons of jumps, not having to jump over them. So you got to figure out where to get power ups. And this first mushroom is perfect because if you jump like the frame before you hit this Goomba and you don't do a full jump, then you can hit this... Um, this mushroom, and then you have to jump over that Goomba anyway, so you get this power up with no additional A presses, so it's perfect. And then same thing on the power up grab, you have to jump over the pipe. So we just grab the mushroom while we do that. Right. Yeah, and then doing that floor clip in underground loses time and doesn't save any A presses, <laughs> but it doesn't actually lose any time <laughs> because of frame rules. Um, I'll start explaining gravity in this game. A lot of experienced Mario players know that you get these really um, like floaty bounces, or I'm gonna call it gravity, when you haven't when you spawn somewhere and you haven't jumped yet. So Mario came out of the pipe and then he hasn't jumped yet, and then he was able to bounce like super high on these Goombas. Um, the point of that in the game is so like when you run off the pipe, you kind of fall down slowly and it looks nice. But we abuse that here by bouncing on these Goombas super duper high to clear this gap. Uh, yeah, this this applies every time you jump. It's going to set you with a different gravity because there's several different ones in the game depending on how, what speed you have when you jump. So sometimes we need walking gravity, which means, um, you know, you're just going at like walking speed. There's like specific range of speeds that it's between, but um, you'll bounce higher off enemies if you do a walking speed jump instead of a running speed jump. Or if you walking speed jump onto a ledge and then run off of it onto an enemy, you still have walking speed gravity so you bounce higher yeah so the gravity only like updates to something else when you jump so it doesn't matter what your current speed is it only matters like what your speed was the last time you jumped it, a lot of times you can maintain a crouching state in this game even when it doesn't look like it and one of those is when you run off of a ledge so mario actually mm -hmm. crouches here but it's the last frame before he runs off so you don't even see it there is a down press right here you can see down on the input display he pushes down, and so he's actually crouching right now, which is why his head goes through the blocks before hitting them, because he has crouching hitbox. Mm -hmm. And then one other thing that's really subtle I want to mention here is that if you go back to when Mario's on the left side of the pipe, Mario's kind of playing around on the left side of the pipe, and he's like falling off it for just a frame and then going back on, and it's really fun and entertaining, but that's actually required um, to be able to clear this gap. Um, that's it's uh, ever so slightly changing Mario's Y position um, or Y sub pixels if you've heard of that before, which makes it which just gives him better Y position to, get, to barely be able to clear, clear this gap. But yeah, as fun as those are, those are to watch, it's also like a required to do for this setup. Uh, yeah, should I should I explain what sub pixels like are? Um, yeah, go for it. In this game, they store Mario's positioning with a number, and his positioning is just stored very, very precisely. Like, his positioning is actually stored more precise than a pixel. So the game will sometimes store his position as pixel, like, his position is 4.1 or 4.9. Like, that 0.1 or 0.9 is, like, his sub-pixels, because that's his differencing, difference in positioning, even though it's within the same pixel. It exists because if you didn't have that, then he could only move by by flat pixels and then like that really limits you maybe two is too slow but three is too fast so mario actually moves 2.5 pixels per frame in this game so he'll move like two one frame and then three the next and that's because like the half pixel carries over and all of that's happening all the time to determine his exact position on the screen something i want to mention for these wall jumps too um wall jump is a glitch obviously that many of you probably have heard of um it's performed by 
having good positioning so you can go inside of a wall for a frame and then all the walls are built out of like blocks like you can see clearly on the ground how big a block is um like big mario is the size of two blocks but if you jump out a wall in just the right spot um where you land on one of these blocks then you can stand on it for one frame as is being pointed out right now and then you, if you jump on that frame you can jump off of it um and then one special thing about the start of one two is that this, uh, to be able to clear the gap to the right after the second wall jump, you need to accelerate very quickly. And many people know about backwards acceleration, how if you're facing the opposite direction in which you're moving, you accelerate faster. But there's actually even more ways to manipulate Mario's acceleration. Uh, there's, depending on the exact scenario, there's like multiple different uh, speeds at which you accelerate, and we need the fastest possible one here. Which is why at the start we run to the right when Mario spawns and then run to the left and do the wall jumps. Because that looks like just a simple time loss. But we actually have to run to the right and then build up enough speed to the left to get a running to both get a running speed jump and to um, meet all the conditions that are needed to get the fastest possible acceleration. Because if we don't have the fastest possible acceleration, then we can't clear that gap at the top. Alright, so starting off here, um, we, you can jump off, bounce off that Koopa and hit the Fire Flower block to reveal the power up. And it's just, you barely reach the Fire Flower. Um, this, the gravities that we talked about earlier, um, you can't do this with running speed gravity, which is like what you normally have usually. Um, but because of the wall jumps we did earlier, we have a gravity where we bounce higher. So that's nice where you can use it to hit this power up. And then right after we hit the power up, we kick the Koopa to the right. The Koopa falls off the ledge. We follow the Koopa. And then there's another glitch where you can get enemies stuck in the ground. That mechanic, like you said, getting stuck in the floor, like that's used a lot in this task. And I guess that happens because if you stomp an enemy like up here, it knows it's above the ground. But to know if it's on the ground, it just checks if it's on the ground or lower. So if it's lower than the ground, it still like... Mm -hmm. stays al alive um so what we do is we go and grab that power up that we used earlier and then this koopa wakes up you can barely see a couple pixels of its eyes at the bottom and then um mario is at the very top of the screen um and then when mario's at the like a above the top of the screen his hitbox is also like at the bottom of the screen in a way and we can use that to screen wrap and have Mario bop the Koopa. Um, and if you go to the frame when Mario bounces on it, you can see the Koopa's eyes at the bottom disappear because it's been stomped and the score appear at the bottom of the screen. Um, and yeah, this whole setup is also very, very precise. Um, we ha It's barely possible to reach that Koopa. It's hard to tell because <laughs> literally everything's off screen, but um, it's barely possible to reach that Koopa. We had to manipulate when the lifts and elevators spawn, exact to, exactly when the Koopa spawns, um, when the Koopa wakes up, what direction it walks to, and like the sub-pixels of the Koopa, um, and all this crazy stuff to be able to just barely reach this Koopa. Because the game's 8-bit, um, like the screen, there's not so many values they can work with, so that's why the vertical screen wrap happens, and, and horizontal. Like The screens are connected on these old games, because... Um, there's only 256 values to work with, so they overflow and underflow really easily. And yeah, we used to grab the flower here. It seemed like a good idea because we need to get on this block anyway, so we're like, oh, okay, so it's it's good to have the flower here because so, we're jumping there anyway, but getting it in zero A presses is obviously much better. And then comes another new glitch. <laughs> well, not brand new for this task, but another glitch that hasn't been shown in this task yet. Yeah. is uh, turning a shiny into a Koopa. You can actually turn, well, I don't know about any enemy, but you can turn a lot of enemies into a Koopa. I know for sure I've done like Goombas and uh, Spinies and multiple enemies, but I haven't what, tested them. You can them do Goombas? Them. Yeah, and they don't stay know. alive. They they like die and fall through the floor. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. 
Okay, so the reason this happens is actually really weird. I actually asked um, Micro500, if you know him, household name in Tassing. Shout outs to him. He is one of the pioneers of like TAS replay devices, um, the type of thing I use to play this TAS on my console. I asked him to investigate this. He went and dug into the workings of the game and figured, like this was already known, but we didn't know exactly why. The reason why is because there is a function in the game that transforms Paracoopas into regular Koopas, right? When you stomp on a Paracoopa, it needs to become a regular Koopa. And for some reason, when you hit um, an enemy from below, like the enemy's X position gets left over in a register, maybe because like they didn't, this is pretty technical. So if it goes over your head, like don't worry, it's pretty uh, kind of need a background in like computer science type stuff to really yeah. get it. But the- I don't, the even, know, I don't even understand this. So. <laughs> The enemy's X position gets left over in a register, and then when it checks to see if it needs to run this function, it checks to see if it's a paracoopa to turn it into a koopa. And because its X position is left over in this register, certain X positions, it thinks you just hit a paracoopa, so it turns it into a koopa. There's like five X positions near the left side of the screen that um, it does like a, a a truncation, and then it like happens to to match like paracoopa value. Anyway, <laughs> hit enemy from below near the left side of the screen. It can turn into a Koopa. Is the thick and thin of it or whatever. <laughs> a lot of a lot of work in four one was done by Happy Lee. Um, <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> yeah, m multiple times. <laughs> right. Eight thousand kick. Eight thousand yeah, point I... shell. Oh, eight thousand point shell kick is in this task. I, I didn't even realize that. either, and that's like my favorite yeah. thing. So it's so cool. <laughs> Okay, so um, once again, we stomp it below the screen. Now it's stuck in the floor. And every time an enemy, like a Koopa it, or a Buzzy Beetle, goes in its shell, it has a 50-50 chance of walking left or right, and it's based on a frame rule, just like the end-of-level frame rules. So there's lots of timer manipulation with this, too. Yeah, the Koopa is, like, heavily manipulated to both wake up as soon as possible after being stomped and to always walk to the right. Uh, cause we want to wake up soon, because then it walks to the right sooner, that's faster. And then, um, I'm not gonna mention it every time it comes up, but like I talked about in 1-1, with like, why subpixels, or like, why positioning being like, subtly affected to get stuff to work, that's used constantly all over the place throughout this whole task. There's so much behind the scenes going on. Like, this is just a s sort of standard floor clip at this point, compared to other things in this task. Could you explain a bit about what it takes to get in the floor like this? Um, the game's like wall collision, if you run into a wall, but you're at like the very top corner of a wall, um, you, the game won't just like stop Mario. Um, I believe it's meant so that like if you, you know, like went to jump up to a platform and Mario's like, the tip of Mario's foot barely brushed the corner of a block, like the developers didn't want you to fully come to a stop. So they were like, oh, if you're like barely in the top corner of the floor, then we won't stop Mario. But we can abuse this by, if you, with like a, a really good angle and Y positioning, uh, you can start to go in that top part of the floor where the floor, where the wall, or sorry, where the block isn't going to like stop Mario. So you see how he's still going into the wall. And then um, as soon as Mario gets to the peak of his jump and he stops uh, moving upwards, and now he's now moving downwards, then the game is like, oh, he's in a wall now. We have to kick him out of the wall. Basically, it, walls want to keep you out of them, and it, there's kind of a flaw in the way they tried to program that. And it actually yeah. just pushes you opposite of what you're holding, rather than pushing you out. So yeah, we're in the floor. Uh, this, is a, this is like the main thing that I had this idea. I was like, wow, we could make turning spinies into a Koopa useful in a task, and you could skip so many A presses by being in the floor, uh, running under walls like these. Um, at the time, I didn't know exactly how far you could keep this Koopa going, or like, anytime there's gaps, I was like, can you clear that in one jump? Or like, do you have to jump, sorry, do you have to jump again to like, clip on the next one or not? And yeah, it's really cool what turned out to be possible. You, you pretty much keep in the whole stage and only have to jump when there's a really wide gap. Like a shorter one like this, Mario can totally run out and then bounce right back in. Oh no. 
one other quick thing I want to say that was just happening a lot that we forgot to mention um, is when Mario's in the floor, he's constantly, it looks like he's just inside these spinies and just not taking damage. Um, but what's going on here is there's a thing called coin toss in this game, which is basically just the game only checks for if Mario's touching an enemy every other frame. Um, so on one frame, it won't check if he's touching any enemies, and on the next frame, it'll say, is Mario inside an enemy? If so, make him take damage. Um, but it does that every other frame. So what we're doing is we're crouching and uncrouching every frame so that he's inside the Spiny's hitbox when the game doesn't check for collision with enemies, and then he's crouched and not in the hitbox when the game does check for collision with enemies. So he's constantly just spam crouching. Um, if we were uncrouched for any one of these frames where we're crouched, we would take damage. Yep, so we're totally inside it. It's not an, a, a piranha plant case where it's like, half of it yeah. just doesn't hurt you. No, we're straight up where it hurts you, but only on e even frames? <laughs> Help. <laughs> it, e even or odd, one yeah, of them. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> yeah, well, it, like, it resets every level, so it won't even be like even or odd. Like It'll change. Right. It's like even or odd yeah. on the that that one timer <laughs> that is used for lots of things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Four dash two. It's pretty short, and there's no like waiting moments, so it's one of the fastest levels. Mm. Maybe the fastest. Because the beginning, there's nothing special you can do. You have to jump up here, and two is the least you can get it in. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, this is one con contrib contribution that DesmileCat came up with, and that's uh, doing a backwards bump here. If you know anything about 4-2, you want to do a wrong warp when you go in the pipe, and to do that, you need to get Mario farther to the right side of the screen. One way to do that is by bumping into blocks, so we got some increased exposition here to the right, and then the rest of that will come... Because we have to wait for that platform anyway, so that bonk didn't waste any time. Yeah, because without that first bump, we had to clip in the wall and then just let Mario slide for a little while. Yeah. Um, and it was like... Uh, and this is only like a few frames faster, but it, it saved a, it saved 0.35 seconds. Right. It's actually crazy. Um, um, just that jump to the pipe, I, I didn't even realize, like... It looks pretty, <laughs> like, tight, just jumping over oh, the yeah. pool and not hitting that block and then landing on the pipe with enough time to fireball the plant. I never realized that either. Okay. 8-1. Um, do you want right to maybe... Then. You can probably talk about... I'm oh, sorry. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm just pointing out, a lot of times in this test, you'll see Mario's going full speed... And then randomly he slows down and does like a slower jump. And that's all because of the gravity thing. So upcoming for some clips and things, you need walking gravity. So walking speed jump onto the pipe. And now we have that forever until we jump again. So if we need to clip in the floor, for example, we have that. <laughs> this had never been done before in a test. Um, there hadn't been a use for it, or like if there was, it wouldn't have been faster ever. But in this case, um, we would need to get in the ground in this because there's tons of pipes and things we want to run under. So I asked Happy Lee, can you clip in this this space right here? And he's like, I don't know. I've never I've never tried anything like that. And he just comes back. I did it. <laughs> so it, that was awesome. Um, it's like brand new thing in Super Mario Bros. Tassing. And the very first time, he, he did a jump right here and then bounced off of the Koopa and then went into the wall. And so it took it took an A-press to get in the ground. Basically, the reason uh, it's so hard is because in the past, you uh, you could see most of the time it was like a, a wider gap. You had lots of time to get the acceleration you needed. Curler mentioned earlier about like getting the maximum acceleration that you that you can. And you need that to clip in the ground here. And it's really hard to get in like this one block wide gap. But it is barely possible if you're standing on the left side, you slide out of the wall at the perfect time. There's just enough space to build up the max acceleration you need and then barely clip in the wall. And isn't there something where like you have to push right on a certain frame and then it gets you a little bit extra in? Yeah, you can um, go like 
a sixteenth of a pixel further into a wall. If you press right, frame perfectly, you frame before you land inside of a wall after wall clipping. <laughs> and like and that that's makes like, the difference. It's so incredibly close to not being possible. And we keep that all the way until here. We want to get out of the ground because, um, yes, you can run across one block gaps in this, but because there's a break in the wall that Mario's inside of, he'll exit the wall and then you would have to do another clip to get in the next one. So you would just like smack into this and fall in the hole. So you need to exit and you don't want to use a jump to exit. So Mario bounces off the Koopa. Uh, you always bounce on an enemy in this game if you're moving downwards. Uh, it's not about whether you're on top of it, although that if you're on top of it and moving upwards, you still bounce. But <laughs> anytime you're moving downwards, regardless of where you hit it, you will bounce on it. So even though we're like totally underneath it and Mario's nose bounces on it, we get it. <laughs> I like Tass Videos calls that a mustache jump, I think, which I really like. Mm -hmm. And then we just have to wait for this beetle to fall on the floor so we can get it stuck in the floor. Same glitch as shown in 1-2 earlier. Mm. And this time, Except like with a beetle this time. Every time we do one of these get the Koopa or the beetle stuck in the ground, it's always like super important what height you keep them at especially like 8-3. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this one specifically, you need the beetle to be, you can see it's like barely above the ground and that's so that you can stomp on it later. Yeah, I believe that's the highest a beetle can be. Mm -hmm. And that's like the only height where you can uh, bounce on it later. Like you can bounce on it from above the ground. And again, all of that is hard to manage when you can only bounce on an enemy every other frame. We mentioned what sub pixels were earlier. Um, and there's some um, weird stuff in the game where, like, the exact positioning or the subpixels of one enemy can affect that uh, subpixel of the next enemy. And, like, we have to manage the exact, like, subpixels of enemy positions just so that, that, like, it's, like, a quarter of a Y pixel lower so that we can get the setup to work or, like, ridiculous things. Some more experienced Mario players may have been thinking of the idea of doing a, a full flagpole glitch with this beetle, but that would require an extra A press to jump to the flagpole to do that. Um, so we don't do that. Right. We'll take another A press. Again, there's holes here. You can't keep going in the ground. Gotta leave it. And then, yeah, you can bounce on the beetle here, and then you land on the flag up here. You can't like bounce you'd have to bounce on the beetle like here to get a full flag book glitch all right you worked on the beginning and and the middle and the <laughs> you worked a lot on eight too so uh, yeah so um this is also here at the start of eight two oh, you go I ahead. just want to say this is also like one of the most precise i feel just from what i could gather when they're talking about it like managing sub pixels to actually get in the ground and everything so yeah. yeah, this this level and get these floor clips are really insane. Oh yeah, so this first enemy bop at the start of eight two is like really high and weird because uh, as we talked about gravity earlier, uh, Mario hasn't jumped at all, so he has a very high like very low gravity, so it's like super bouncy and floaty. So that that first bounce is just for fun. Um, it doesn't do anything. It's just cool. And then as Cosmic mentioned earlier, you can stomp enemies from below as long as Mario is moving downwards. So Mario just gets past the peak of his jump and then is able to bop the bottom of the Koopa with his head, which is kind of funny. I believe there's also a down input right here. Yep, so Mario again does crouch falling. He's crouching hitbox so he doesn't hit his head right here. And then um, we can see Mario does a little slowdown at the spring and that's again for the gravity. Uh, Mario gets to walking speed for one frame and then jumps, so he jumps with walking speed. Um, and then you're able to gain back running speed on the spring. And even though we like do a big bounce off the spring, it's actually not a jump. Um, so we keep the walking gravity even though we bounce off the speed spring with running speed. And then here comes just absolute insanity. Um, all these ideas for 8-2 were come up by Happy Lee. Um, we kn happily like knew we were trying to clip in this floor, but the way it was originally done required like two or three A presses, and then we we're like trying like had theorized ways to do it, and, like two or like maybe one. And then while we were working on this, um, there was one point Happily said he had an idea to do it in zero A presses, 
which was like blowing everyone's mind when he was talking about that. And we were all asking what it was, and he was like, just wasn't explaining it because he was just saying it would be too complicated to explain. <laughs> yeah. And then he was working on it for like a like a little while. And then he was like, let's all hope this doesn't work, because we don't want to have to, like, deal with this and, like, actually task this. He finally got it to work. But, it, like, when he first got it to work, it was still, like, he was just hacking in all these enemies' positions and just saying, like, if theoretically we had all these enemies in these crazy locations at the perfect time, would this technically be possible? And then he figured that that was true. So then we had to figure out a way to match all these insane circumstances. Um... And there's a whole lot of stuff, again, like we've talked about before, with, like, Mario's exact Y position, and, like, these Koopas are, like, that Koopa in the floor is stuck at a very specific spot in the floor. Um, Looks like we're I think it, y it's manipulation as well right here. Yeah. Um, I think that Koopa's position is, like, uh, pixel perfect. Um, and then we, like, spawn all these enemies at the perfect time, and then... That bullet bill only has, like, a couple frame window to shoot. Um, and we just have to get it to shoot at that time. Um, and that's, like, really difficult to manage, especially with... Um, if there's too many enemies on screen, more bullets won't fire. So we have to make sure that, like, bullets don't fire beforehand too much, or else it'll be impossible to get another one. Um, and, like, it's, it's really, really difficult to manage all this. There's stuff, like, there's even a Koopa that spawns off-screen that you never see, and we have to, like, manage it very, very precisely when this Koopa spawns and then despawns, even though, like, it never even comes on screen, because, like, it affects the RNG and, like, when bullets shoot and all this stuff. Um, this is, like, crazy to manage and is just insane. And yeah. then the Y position here is also really precise to get Mario to actually clip all the way in the floor. So this is a one block wide uh, clip, just like in 8-1, but this one has a block on top of it. So if when you move upwards, you hit a block and it pushes you back downwards. So it's, it's like a really difficult uh, situation to try and clip all the way into. So that's why mm -hmm. you need so many enemies and you have to be like moving at this perfect speed with perfect positioning. And the enemies that are there are, like, RNG-based, so yeah. it's really ridiculous. So you get, like, partially in, and then you bounce on the bullet bill, and, like, barely get in there, man. <laughs> yeah. And then even after all that ridiculously precise manipulation, we have to get a bullet bill to fire from here as soon as we can. And with all the crazy setup we did earlier, there's not much you can do to manipulate future bullet bills. Um, we actually got pretty good RNG and got like this one of the first bullet bills to shoot like really soon. Um, and then yeah, this first one shoots like ridiculously soon. Yeah, that's like, like you like you as soon as it can shoot when you're if you're yeah. right next to it, they don't shoot. So that's really early for it to shoot. Yeah, that's like I think that's like as soon as it could, or maybe one or two frames later. But with how uncommon it is for bullets to shoot, that's like crazy. Yeah, like, um, we do a lot of playing around to make this look entertaining, but it's, like, it's very precise and exact movement. Um, and then we have to find a way to also make it fun to watch, which is sometimes hard, but yeah. And the reason we need um, so many is because there's a lot of things we want to skip jumping over, like... Oh, we need to get out of the ground because there's this one block gap. But we also want to be in the ground still, so we just yeah. clip in the next one. And now we still have to get out of the ground. So we use this one to get out of the ground. And then with like a perfect jump, you barely get enough height off that bullet bill to make it here. Yeah. So just so much ridiculous planning all done by Happy Lee. And then uh, I helped out a lot with like actually tassing it but happily was like all the brains behind all of it with all the theorization and stuff i just always saw him saying like yeah make the canon timer say this and make your y subpixel this and make the koopa this <laughs> and <laughs> yeah <laughs> the main difficulty here is getting his first bullet to shoot as late as possible and that's really rare um Happily was like analyzing the RNG a lot to try to find what frames you can come out of this pipe. And then like we had to come out of this pipe at that exact frame. Um, and 
Yeah, it's like the the luck we got in eight two is just insane. Like how fast we got the bullet bill to shoot after the first four floor clip, and then like as much as we slow down in that underground, it's really not that much compared to like what yeah. it could be. It, like sometimes you have to slow down like a full second or two. This is the uh, coming out of a pipe or starting a level gravity. Like haven't jumped yet. That's why this is so floaty. Yeah, and then we use the floaty physics again to do a stair clip. And um, if you know a bit about this game, you may be thinking, well, like a stair clipping in the stairs, I thought that was impossible or else, you know, it'd be used in a 4-2 warp zone to save time or things like that. Um, and you're right, it is impossible in almost every single circumstance, except like this exact circumstance where we haven't jumped yet after spawning and have these really floaty, like uh, really floaty gravity. Um, and it makes it so that we can just like stay in the wall for a while and get pulled really far in the wall before landing which allows us to clip all the way in um and then I need this bullet to um, shoot <laughs> yeah and then we just like get this perfect bullet build to shoot after getting like the really rare bullet hit bills from beforehand and then get this two more to, to shoot, shoot right which here. that is like <laughs> earlier than i've ever seen <laughs> playing the game yeah. rta <laughs> Um, and, and then we need two, two bullet bills here too. <laughs> yeah. And like they have to be like yeah, this is just ridiculous. The the top one behind the bottom one. And normally Mario walks over here and like this block right here is solid. And when he touches that, it says, "Okay, trigger the countdown and put Mario behind the scenery." And so that puts him behind the castle, starts the countdown. And yeah, this is the same thing as um 4-1, where you're able to grab the flag inside the block and very low so that you don't even get up onto the block. You get pushed out of it, and it says trigger the countdown because he's running into a block now and put him behind the scenery. So I think it's really funny. There's a tree here that you go behind. Uh, I do want to take a second to talk about this spot um, because there's some bullet bills that shoot there, and you might think, oh, you know, get some bullet bills to follow you. Maybe you can get past these stairs somehow or, like, get a whole bunch of bullet bills following you do something else in the level and we had this is really the only level where we had some ideas that didn't work everything else we got it to everything to happen but this spot we tried really hard to save some a presses right here some things were close but we just couldn't quite get them so couldn't either couldn't get a good enough bullet bill pattern to like stomp them in like quick enough succession to either like clear this gap and that gap or like run off of here and like bounce on multiple so quickly that you could clip in the stairs. It just didn't seem possible. There was an idea to do what's called a damage clip right here. If you take damage um, while moving downwards inside a wall, then during the damage animation, you'll keep scrolling in the wall and clip into it and that those are pretty specific conditions because you can only take damage while moving downwards from like a spiny, a hammer, or a fire bar, basically. <laughs> Those are your options. Or I guess like a piranha plant. So we had that idea to do that right here, but like you also would have needed some bullet bills to bounce off of. And if you got bullet bills to follow you here, then one of the hammer bros didn't spawn and it's the hammer bro you needed to throw the hammer to clip off of. So yeah, it just didn't work out, but that was that was like probably the closest idea that didn't make it in. Basically everything else did. Anyways, for this section, um, we bounce on this Koopa to help us get out of the floor and then do a wall jump here. And then that's all while this Koopa on the right is spawned. And then we use it to clip in the next floor. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we're managing like the RNG of where, when this Koopa is gonna wake up and what direction it's gonna walk um because we want to walk to the right um and you need this you, section um one thing is you can't reach this pipe with like less oh. than running speed from down here so you i think at one point we probably like bounced up and waited for the koopa to wake up again and then jumped up or something mm -hmm. um but yeah, happily had a really smart solution which was to bounce off of it and then wall jump and that gets you up here with the gravity that you need because you need you can't use running speed gravity for this next clip yeah you need walking i think at one point we were just like ditching that first koopa and only using the second one 
and we were like getting out of the floor instead of wall jumping early um, on i don't know if it was before you or not we were using bullet bills at the end i don't know if you knew that oh no i didn't <laughs> yeah. know that also i love this screen scroll yeah that looks so cool you almost never seen mario face right the whole time and be able to do a screen scroll yeah i didn't i don't even really understand he uh, presses right to fall off the block and then presses left to go back on the block. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 I was totally lost when I watched it too, and I had to, like watch the input display frame by frame. But yeah, it was so creative. That was um, a lot of A3 was done by the Smile Cat. Like a while ago, we were talking about trying to clear this gap with these Koopas, but we couldn't get it. We couldn't pull it off. Just about a month ago. I was like messing around with it some more, and then I found the strat of bopping the second or the first Koopa twice. Um, and then I was able to like prove it theoretically possible to pull this off, but it like it looks like we just run to the right at the start of this room and then just use the Koopas as their spawn. But there's like the spawning of these Koopas is heavily manipulated and it's very, very precise. If you just run to the right, the way the Koopas spawn, you can't clear this gap. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a lot of sneaky stuff that's done at the start to make it just barely possible to clear this gap. And then you'll notice that the A button is uh, held the entire time here uh, because we don't do any extra A presses throughout the rest of the next room. So that does a buffered jump right here. If you're holding A when you enter a yeah. level or come out of a pipe, it buffers a jump. Which also caused that weird animation glitch. Um, and then also because we buffered a jump there, which saved an A press, because um, like we you know, we carry over the same A press, that means that we're stuck with whatever gravity we have, which in this case is standing gravity because we jumped without any speed. Um, and it just so happened that that is the gravity we needed to get all these crazy stuff, all these cheaps to work. Um, and this is another level where Mario's like Y position is managed very, very, very precisely. Um, you can see like one of the, on the first cheap bounce, we like go up and to hit a wall jump pixel on the first pipe. Then when we bounce on a cheap later, we don't hit the wall jump pixel because we don't go as high because of like slight minor variations in Y positioning. And I believe one of these cheaps that's used on this, like right here on the right side of that second pipe, I believe one of those cheaps isn't even required, but the only reason we have it is to like slightly change Mario's Y positioning by less than a pixel so that we're able to climb up the pipe. I think it's this one um, right here. Yeah. Because um, it's that yeah, same it thing where Mario would normally like stand on the edge and like kind of teeter and that changes the Y. Uh, that cheap does a similar thing. The thing with the cheaps is like cheap cheaps can jump at different speeds. They can come up at different spots. You need them to go at like the perfect spot basically um, because Mario can't jump. So a lot of times you bounce on an enemy by like jumping and then falling down onto it. But if some if Mario ever just like hits the top of an enemy, he'll bounce, and you can only do that like by running at them when they're perfectly at floor height. So like all of these cheeps have to come at the perfect spot. So wherever Mario needs to bounce on it, it needs to be right there so his feet touch it. Periwinkle made a spreadsheet, and then um, basically, the Smile Cat was able to use that to brute force what um, frames we should pause on or like. Basically, the combinations we could do to get cheap, cheap patterns that would let us clip through the pipes and, like, staircase up this pipe. Mm. And this this was the fastest solution oh. found by it, um, is with all of these pauses. And one thing um, that's pretty subtle in speedruns, you, you go in this pipe because it, it's faster. You're supposed to go in the next pipe to go to the water room, but you can go in this pipe if you scroll the screen far enough to, like, load the next pipe's um, ent entrance point basically so you do need to scroll the screen far enough but also when you come over here you start making three cheap cheeps jump at the start of the room only two cheap cheeps can jump but if you scroll the screen far enough or like come far enough into the room three cheap cheeps start jumping so that lets you get a faster pattern up as well or like it might even be required so that you can do this crazy staircase okay 
So we're still holding A through that whole room. It let us buffer jump in the mm -hmm. at the start of the previous room. It also buffers a swim right here. Uh, that actually does not save an A press because you could use a swim to clip through the corner right here. Um, so if you had to release, then you would clip through the corner here. And yeah, that lets you go all the way through this wall in one A press instead of buffered swim plus one swim. Since we were able to hold A all the way, it's faster to just go over. But if we couldn't, then that was an alternate possibility. That frame you were just pausing a moment ago was shooting the invisible piranha plant that's in the pipe we come out of. Oh, that's not it? some crazy glitch, but just kind of funny because there's actually a piranha plant in the pipes underwater. It's just they're behind. Like, yeah. the picture of the piranha plant is behind the picture of water. Yeah. So you just can't see it. It is like uh, the water is on a layer Sprite? in front of the... Yeah. Uh, Piranha plant. Mm -hmm. Right there. That's also why Mario disappears when he goes in the pipe at the end. And then there's another uh, probably pressing down off that ledge to make yeah. Mario's hitbox smaller. Same as falling off the other ledges. Yep, yeah, right there. there but it's always the last frames. So you never actually get to see the crouch, but <laughs> trust me, he's crouching. Look at this. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we also spent so much time on this last room entertainment. <laughs> this is the part that you tasked, Cosmic. I These did are your this. inputs. Whoa, suboptimal falling. Crazy. <laughs> this part I like made up, though. I wanted to make him keep falling off while turning around. Wow, this probably could have been done better. But now Curler took over. He did nice, nice turns and all this nice beat. This part, he's like spinning around like crazy. Spinning. <laughs> <laughs> His legs, dude. There's like the fireballs, posi exact positioning, and like sub pixel and stuff are manipulated really heavily here just so we could shoot. Did we st like <laughs> we, we spent, spent so, so much time, time just trying to just, like shoot just some... for like yeah. this moment, like to shoot some fireballs. Because usually the fireballs, the gap. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like those fireballs will often hit the pipe instead of bounce over it. But with, like certain scenarios, they can bounce over it. Look at the like he's doing the crouch every other frame thing, but Mara's also shooting a fireball. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so funny. And then. Same thing with Bowser is like you do some crouches so you don't get hit. Yeah. And then look how because close. We only have to do one crouch there. Okay, look. Bowser dies in five fireballs. You might think, oh, I've heard this thing where you can do double damage uh, to Bowser sometimes. That's only if you hit him like right here. So you can't do that from the back. So one fireball, two fireballs, three fireballs, four fireballs, five fireballs. <laughs> Bowser's gone. <laughs> That's the end of the test. It's so close. Mm -hmm. That's the minimal minimum A presses test. That's all that went into it. Yeah. Uh, try to make it technical enough that you understand how much went into it, but hopefully still in a way that anyone could follow and just kind of understand what went into it, even if you're not the person who made Mario go in the ground in 8-2, because even I don't know everything that <laughs> happened there. <laughs> yep. So, 62. It's It seems like maybe a big number, especially if you know Mario 64 gets all 120 stars in like 18 or something now. Um, but that's mm -hmm. a very different game. They can, they can move, it. they have lots of enemies, and they put them wherever they want and do all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and we have tiny little bounces off of <laughs> like really simple enemies so yeah yeah and there's there's no way you're getting over the first goomba or the first pipe like it's just yeah there's just no way we have man. like we have like left right b and a to deal with like yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to use awful buttons <laughs> mm -hmm. no no like uh, backwards slope walking in shallow water to build infinite speed <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> uh. 